Hello to all you lovers out there. It is Juan and G here with another episode of Love Works with Juan and G. And today we have a very, 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 two very special guests today. Two ladies, which we don't get to sit down with very often, so I'm really excited to sit down with them. Yeah, absolutely. We have Miss Melissa Scott of Love and Hip Hop. She's also a business owner here in Atlanta, a promoter. She does it all. She's a boss, okay? And we also have Miss Jasmine Burke yes. of Saints and Sinners and Star on Fox. Yes, the pescatarian. So today, <laughs> I, I know she doesn't eat meat, although she ate lamb one time we was out. They are two friends of ours, so we hang out with them sometimes. And, but I cooked a, a, a low country boil today. Which was crab, great. Mussels, shrimp, oysters. All of that stuff. So today, I hope they impress. Hello to all you lovers out there. People always asking us what's the tea. It ain't no tea, baby. Can't you see? Loving me, loving you, loving we. Love works with Juan and G. It ain't no tea, baby. All right, Juan and G have some guests for you. Hi, Juan and G. <laughs> Why it smells good? We're cooking crabs. Let me get you a t-shirt to put on. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. fine, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me see what's going on. Like, I'm making a little crab oil. Who did the cooking? Me. Ooh, baby. <laughs> I know oh. you're a vegetarian. Muscle and shrimp. Uh -huh. And crab. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is heaven. Yep. What's in the oven? What's in the oven? That's the bread. Oh, the bread. Oh, Ooh, which I want to drink. Oh, liquor? It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got tequila, crab, and Tito's. Um, Ooh. Ooh. This is going to be a night for us. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get y'all telling all the secrets. No, no, no. Kid you not. Every time we have a Tito's night, like it's just it's just like is complete debauchery. Like, I mean, like Tito's. Yeah, yeah Tito's it is. Tito's flash of crab. Crab. Do you want to be like, do you want to turn it up tonight? Tito's on the rocks? No. With a line slash line. No, no, I'm not G. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that G. What did y'all meet? Oh, shit. Do you? No, what I should think. Alright. So we met, then met, then met, then met. Then we met. I got you. Y'all used to see each other all the time. I ain't never met her. She's been around me five times. Like, she's had, or four, she's had converse, little conversations with me. And didn't remember me. And then we have to, actually one of our interactions was me telling my friend Gaucher that they're friends, mm -hmm. and me telling her, "Listen, hey, that girl right there, don't ever bring her around me ever again. Do you understand? I don't remember saying that ever. <laughs> I don't remember saying. I mean, I remember saying it, but I don't remember saying that to you. I thought, um, and I go to this crazy event one night. Like it was an amazing event. It was called um, Jungle Ball. Ah! <laughs> I'm actually at the Jones Ball and they put someone else. Okay, so uh, I'm having this crazy magnetic energy with this stranger. I was like, don't bring her around me again because I, I know how I am. I'll be, I don't have good energy all the time with people mm -hmm. and I had crazy energy with this girl. So I'm like, okay, I don't need her to be around because I know me. How and long were you dating the girl you were currently with? At the time? At that time, yeah. Just dating, not not necessarily together, but uh -huh. probably like, um, Nine months, ten months. Is this the ball? ball? Is it a men's ball? Yeah. Nine it's months. Us. Yeah. But I mean, like when I say. Sour on Jasmine. Right. I'm talking about like that night. That energy was crazy, and I was like, oh shit. What was the energy like for you? Um, it was just Melissa. I was like. You guys, you had always. Yeah, I, I had been around. I was yeah, like, hey, yeah. what's up? So check this out. All these months, I've been thinking it's this crazy energy, but now that we traced it backwards. It wasn't that. It was she just knew me. She was familiar energy, and I'm over here like, I'm over here like, oh my god, what is this? No, back? <laughs> no bitch, she know you. But you know what? It was what you needed, right? Right. To be here tonight, yeah. You needed that familiarity. She just know you. That's all. She it was that you act like you don't know nobody energy. Yeah. <laughs> so, so is that common, like for female, like female? How do you pick up each other, female, female? You know, because so let me just preface this. Tonight we want to get into female-female relationship dynamics and how they differ from gay because we have all kinds of questions, preconceived notions, stereotypes. 
So I want to start by saying I apologize. <laughs> I got all if this. I offend. She don't know nothing. I got all this. <laughs> Are you a lesbian? She know nothing. <laughs> Were you ready for the way Jasmine <laughs> made her entrance? I wasn't ready for either one of them. They looked like they was going to the gentleman's bar. I know, and I we were all dressed down and stuff. They came in all glammed up, but right. hey, that's how ladies do, right? Hey, Melissa is too smooth for me. So, so I just want to apologize first if I offend, ask a stupid question, get it wrong, make sure we get it right. All right? All right, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. We're kind of talking about how we, how and I use the word lesbian loosely because mm -hmm. I, I don't know how you identify yourself. What should what word should we use? I'm gay. Gay. Let's physically don't want to have sex with men. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like just at all. Like what? Are you attracted to uh, masculine women? Hell no. 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 Why is that a hell? <laughs> I would date a man before I dated a masculine woman. Really? Yeah. Why? Just I don't like masculine women. Uh, uh, I don't like masculine women. I just don't. Because like in the gay community. A lot of our relationships take on mirror kind of like the heterosexual masculine feminine role where you have one that's more masculine, one that's more feminine, and they really play into those roles into man woman almost. Like on purpose. Yeah, on purpose. Like this is even my wifey and, mm -hmm. and that type of situation. Is do you all have that dynamic in your relationship? Is that something you subscribe to? Is do you like the roles, not what, what does that look like for you? Well for, for me I don't know if it's more masculine or feminine. Um, I guess you can associate a person that tends to enjoy taking care of someone as being more masculine. Mm -hmm. But that, that's just not, it's not that I'm trying to be more masculine. I enjoy dressing this way, yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But um, for me, I enjoy my lady uh, depending on me because I like being there. I like being like that backbone, that support. I like being home for a person. Like, you know, sometimes home is like a house, but no, home is with a person. Um, I like home with the person I care for being with me, wherever that is. And if that's a hotel in Dubai, or if that's at the house right. in Atlanta, or you know what I'm saying? It's like that, me being that structure for that person. Um, I love being strong for a person I care about. So I think that it's, you know, in listening to Melissa and um, the way she shows up in relationships, mm -hmm. are they much different than gay men? Not really. Are they much even different than any other relationship? I think that in a relationship you are always going to have, and we learned this even going through counseling, mm -hmm. you're always going to have a masculine and a feminine energy, which does not mean that you're a woman. It does not mean that you're a man. Right. It does not always translate to the bedroom or any of that. But what it means is there's a person like Melissa who is the doer mm -hmm. and who is the structure, as she calls herself, the home. The home. And then you have her counterpart who is somebody is going to be looking for more of that structure, more of that person who's going to lead, more of that person who's going to be the doer. And they typically bring the emotions and the right. feeling into That's the relationship. And, <laughs> you know, I think it's really amazing um, that Melissa is able to identify that mm -hmm. within herself. You know, she has that level of awareness where she's like, I know this is my role in relationships. Mm -hmm. I am fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I'm fulfilled by doing, by being, by being that security blanket mm -hmm. for someone. And, and you just don't really find that people owning up to that and, and saying, me taking care of you is me taking care of me. Yeah. And that's special. And that's you know, really special. Sometimes I think that, you know, a lot of us don't own it because sometimes we don't even know that that's how, that's who we are in a relationship. Doing, right. And especially when sometimes you come with two men um, that can be, and this happened with us, you can really butt heads because you feel like the man is always supposed mm -hmm. to be that one that's doing, 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 right. and leading, 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 but it's impossible to be in a relationship where both people can't lead. Right. Both people Somebody just can't has to follow. You know, and, and, and both, but you need both. Mm -hmm. And it's about being aware of what you bring to the relationship, but comfortable with that and when the relationships really start to create the harmony. Getting this stuff together. Talk to us about you know the projects you guys are working on. I mean, you these superstars in the house. We got some real superstars in the house. So <laughs> Star on Fox, yes. Saints and Sinners, yes. business owner part. Oh, she's been Love doing business. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. That's coming. But yeah, tell us how did you end up on Love and Hip Hop? Tell us. Me. I'm tell supposed me. to say tune in to see Love and Hip Hop. Um. 
as much as I can tell you, uh, I'm good friends with Carly, I'm good friends with uh, Jocelyn, I'm good friends with Mimi, good friends, and I can tell you that some of those friendships won't make it through the, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sure how the episodes come out, so I don't know about April, which one won't make it, but right, I can tell you right. some of those relationships will not make it, they're going to turn into very tumultuous re relationships. Unfortunately. Um, unfortunately. Yeah. Not in my how Melissa is, she's like here for everybody. Right. But she's not gonna come for you unless you come for her. And just certain people came for her, yeah. so she had to come for me unsuspect unsuspectedly, like it just and undeserved me. Do you think it's like me. why? Was it the pressure to have a storyline? Was it yes. real? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Too. It may be the pressure to have a storyline. I'm not the sure how that works. But and I'll tell you this: an innocent person. Yeah. But I'll tell you this. Um, you can say that, she can't say right. that. Right. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, but unfortunately, it carries over into real life. It right. happens, the things that happen in scene is what it is. If you get cussed out in scene, you cuss me out. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right, you're trying to have a drink. Right, I'm trying to drink me out. You smack me, you done smack me, bitch. <laughs> Damn, you was fighting Melissa? Ooh. Damn, you was fighting Melissa? I'm not a fighter. I'm a turn it. <laughs> tune in. 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 Oh, tune in. We got yeah, no, no, that was a very generic statement, but just tune in. It's gonna, it's gonna be a very uh, racy, emotional roller coaster. Mm. I've always been a connector of people. Now, this Memorial Day weekend, I'm coming to Puerto Rico to connect you to your best self. I'm teaming up with Escape Puerto Rico LGBT Arts and Culture Music Festival to help you firm up your life through faith, focus, and finance. Come, get away with me at the luxurious Wyndham Grand Rio Mar Beach Resort and Spa in Rio Grande. But I'm not alone. I'm being joined by a star-studded roster of celebrities like the Grammy Award-winning Brandy, American Idol winner Candace Glover, and model and actress Eva Marcel. So join me and some of the original cast of the From Up Your Life series for the official Firm Up Your Life book release and seminar. We're about to empower Puerto Rico, May 26th through the 29th. Get your tickets today. For more information, visit the redbookmg.com. Well, what about Saints and Sinners coming back, season Saints two? And sinners, season two. Yeah, um, it's a crazy ride. You know, um, we were like the little engine that could, you mm -hmm. know, bounce is a awesome network and they, um, you know, offer really cool retro programming and so they stepped out on faith and said we're going to do our first original drama and they did that with Saints and Sinners and launched us and we broke the records the number one show on Bounce you know we were competing neck and neck with huge shows on other mm. networks and we were just we kept we kept growing you tell us about how you um ended up on Star Oh. about that experience. And let me just tell you, we cried. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, it's too late. We knew it was coming. I was like, we cried when Danielle died. <laughs> yeah. That's not necessarily the end of Danielle. Just FYI, I mean, yeah. like, you go and cry. We never know. She might come back as a ghost. <laughs> and well, I already come back. back. Yeah. So, you I was already, dancing and shit? I, yeah, I died on the But she was dead. Right. <laughs> But you know, people die on shows all the time and they still play the whole season right. and they have all these flashbacks. Right, they be in the season like shit yeah. more than when they was alive on the right. right. So you know, we'll keep up alive, we'll see what happens. But no, being at one star at the time I was there was awesome. Like working with Lee Daniels, it just opened my eyes to really be an artist. Mm. Like, don't get so caught up in the politics of it all and the, the you know, the stuff that happens that nobody gets to see or hear about. Right. You know, he, it, when we came into the room to do our table, I remember our first table read when I got, it. initially I had a smaller part. Initially it was like for a counselor, it was like counselor. And I literally had like three lines mm. and came into the table read for Fox and everybody. And we were like rehearsing, this before we ever started shooting. And um, so Cotton, Amaya Hammer. Hey, Amaya, we love her. She couldn't be there for the table read. So, I went up to Lee and was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sir, actually, not yo. So <laughs> I'm comfortable with my people right, right. now. Right. I didn't say yo, I said, yo, like, you know, Mr. Daniels. Um, <laughs> I didn't even know who am I, I didn't, I had never met her or anything. I just said, it said cotton and I 
knew it was a transgender role. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, um, so I knew it had to have a certain like spice to it, a certain flavor mm -hmm. to it. And I was like, she wasn't there, so they had somebody else reading for her. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I came to him at lunch and I said, um, <clears throat> I said, yeah. I said, you know, my part, I only have like three lines and I'm done in the beginning. You know, you want me to read Cotton's lines? You know, fill in for her. And he was like, yes, do that. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we went back in to tell me everybody from Fox showed up. So I was reading <laughs> Cotton's lines. So I was like, I'm about to show him what I can do. Because with the original part I had, it was just counselor, three yeah. lines. So you really couldn't see what I could do. Right. So I was like, hi, and I could show them my level. Right. So I turned up and I read all of Amaya's lines for her. And so at the end, um, everybody was like, hold on, counselor. Hold on, we might need to find something else for this one. So then I came to my fitting for the counselor. And I was like, yes, yeah, so I'm thinking I work at this group home. Maybe I should wear dark colors. And like, you met everybody in the wardrobe mm -hmm. department. They were like, counselor? They're like, sweetie, um, you're Danielle. And I'm like, who? They do it right. for you. Right. Yeah, and I was like, who is they? I was like, Danielle, Danielle? Because right. I had read the script. Oh, so you knew there was a I knew Danielle uh, was a series regular. She had a part in the show. Mm -hmm. right. The counselor was one and done. So I was like, Danielle, Danielle? And they were like, yeah, wait, wait, let's go, let, let's go double check. Mm -hmm. They ran, check, they came back and they were like, yeah, sweetie, you're our Danielle, welcome to the cast. And I was like, I started crying. I was like, oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty dope. Yeah. Pretty that dope. is dope. That's my first time hearing a story. Really? Yeah, so that's fantastic. I didn't that's know that. Y'all first, so, y'all first one on my works. Aw, if you're a lesbian, I kiss you. That was an amazing story. Yeah. Jasmine's <laughs> story on how she got the role mm -hmm. on Star. And what it really taught me was that Number one, you have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. You have to always be on your shit. You have to always be ready to take advantage of an opportunity when it presents mm -hmm. itself. Like she took that opportunity, she created right. that opportunity right. and ran with it and look where it led her. Like that was so powerful and motivating to me. Yeah, I mean, in seizing the moment, she was there for, what did she say? Counselor. Right. <laughs> Counselor, didn't even Three realize. Lines. Three lines, but she went in there and she said, hey, Mr. Daniels, I can read these lines. I mean, that was amazing. She said, yo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, but you know, seize the moment. Mm -hmm. Take opportunities because guess what? If she had walked out of the office, we wouldn't even know. Some of you would not have known she is right now. Absolutely. And, and it's all about trusting yourself. Mm -hmm. Trust that you are prepared. Trust that the universe is putting you in this situation for good mm -hmm. and for the betterment of you, for the abundance of your life. And seize that moment. Visit Soul Bar at 254 Auburn Avenue, Northwest in Atlanta, Georgia for good food, good hookah, a good time. It's Soul Bar at 254 Auburn Avenue. Soul Bar at Palabaca. Hello to all you lovers out there. What do you think it takes it would take to get the gays and the lesbians to be all one happy family in their lives? I feel like trying to party the party of us animals. Why is it so separate? Today's Ask Juan and G question goes like this. Dear Juan and G, I am in a relationship crisis. My boyfriend and I argue over the silliest things and he just doesn't get me. Most of the time I get the bad end of the stick with him. He even treats me, oh, excuse me, he even treats strangers nicer than he treats me. He calls his Instagram friends babe, but won't even give a good morning kiss to me. It goes even further. He has a friend that I know he's had sex with. Mm. He has a friend that I know he's had sex with, and it's the same friend that he cheated on an ex with. Mm. When we first got together, he told me he and this friend had the best sex ever. Wow. I know. <laughs> Sheesh. I am not comfortable with his friendship with this guy, and I don't know what to do. Please help. There's a lot of layers to that A question. lot of layers. So like the first thing is they argue over the silliest things. 
Um, he treats strangers better than he treats him. He calls his Instagram friends babe. I call my Instagram friends boo. I don't know if that's the same thing. But won't even give him a good morning kiss. Uh, he's had friend sex with his friend, best sex of his mm -hmm. life, and he cheated on his ex with this friend who's still in his life. So, I mean, my first question would be, why are you around? Um, <laughs> if he doesn't even give you a good morning kiss, I'm assuming it's something he used to do, he doesn't give you a good morning kiss, you feel like he treats everybody else better than you, he has his ex, I mean, he has his friend that kind of a friend but not a friend that you're not comfortable with um the communication obviously sucks you guys aren't you're, you guys aren't communicating because you're not even comfortable enough to have these conversations with him about the ex um i would question like what is he saying when you ask him why you don't get a good morning kiss mm -hmm. or what does he say when you tell him that he's treating people better than better than you or what does he say when you tell him you're not comfortable with um this relationship he has with a friend. To me, all of that is null and void. I think the issue is the communication. Um, and it's playing its way everywhere. Like, I don't, it, this is kind of hard because I'm like, what are y'all doing together? Yeah, I, for me, this whole scenario, this whole relationship has nothing to do with the boyfriend and everything to do with you. Mm -hmm. and, and my question to you is, when are you going to start taking care of yourself? When are you gonna start honoring yourself and respecting yourself to not deal with this kind of stuff mm -hmm. anymore? Like that's the first and foremost question because it seems like it's been going on for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, since you got together, shit. You know, you you know he cheats. Right. You know he's had sex with this friend multiple times. Best sex ever. These are things you know about him. Right. So you don't need answers to those questions. Like this is his behavior, and the longer you stay in this relationship, you're saying this behavior is okay. Right. And so you, you have to have the tough conversation back to the communication. Mm -hmm. Look, I don't like to be treated this way. I want to feel important in your life. Mm -hmm. I want the affection that I deserve. Mm -hmm. And if you can't give that to me, now we have to de decide how we're going to relate to each other moving forward. Precisely. Tell him what you want. Can he deliver? Yes. Stay. No. Peace. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, it is as easy as that. And please, please, please look into the value you place in yourself. Mm -hmm. That's Absolutely. so important, and that's the what I most worry about is the value you are placing in yourself. And also, trust yourself. Mm -hmm. Trust your gut. Trust that voice, that intuition that's telling you this ain't right. Trust the the reason why you wrote to us is because you know it's not right, mm -hmm. but you're not listening to yourself. Right. So I hope that helps. Hope that helps. Please keep sending in your questions. Ask at oneng.com. Ask at oneng.com. Love you all. Peace. That's what's the tea It ain't no tea, baby, can't you see Loving me, loving you, loving we Love works with one and G It ain't no tea, baby What's the tea? It ain't no tea, baby What's the tea? It ain't no tea, baby What's the tea? It ain't no tea Love you all